We are continuing with the final video for this week, and it deals with sources of monopoly power, and then lastly, bilateral monopoly. So as I said, there are three key sources. The first is elasticity of market supply. Then we have the number of buyers, and lastly, the interaction amongst buyers. So you can see the factors are similar to that of the sources of monopoly power, where we looked at the elasticity of market demand, the number of sellers, and the interaction amongst sellers. So let's zoom in on monopsony. So if there is only one buyer in the market, you know that that is a pure monopsonist. But as we said, um, that is fairly rare. But let's say there is a pure monopsonist, then its monopsony power is going to be completely determined by the elasticity of the market supply right so if supply is highly elastic then the monopsony power is small remember the flatter curve um, had a smaller difference between marginal value and price however if the if the supply is inelastic then there'll be greater gain um, to being the only buyer also, the number of buyers plays a role. So when there are lots of buyers, then no single buyer can have much effect over the price. So each buyer then faces an extremely elastic supply curve so that the market is almost competitive. And then lastly, the interaction amongst buyers. So for example, if there are four buyers in a market and they compete very aggressively, what you find is that they will bid up the prices. Imagine these four bidding up the price and what they do is they bid it up close to the marginal value of the product in so doing that the difference between the price and the marginal value is not that great and hence they have little monopsony power. But on the other hand, if those buyers compete less aggressively or even collude then prices won't be bid up very much and the bias degree of monopsony power might be nearly as high as if you had a pure monopsonist just one buyer lastly we'll look at bilateral monopoly now a bilateral monopoly is a market with only one seller and one buyer now, in such a situation, it is difficult to predict what the outcome on the price and the quantity is going to be with a bilateral monopoly. Because if you think about it, both the buyer and the seller, so both the um, monopsonist and the monopolist, they both have bargaining power. They are both bargaining in that particular situation. So a bi bilateral monopoly is once again a situation that is quite rare. So although bargaining may still be involved, there is a rough principle here, and that is that the one has the ability to cancel out the other to some extent. So monopsony power and monopoly power will tend to counteract each other, almost cancel each other out. So if you think about it, the monopsony power of the buyers tends to reduce the effect of the monopoly power of the sellers and vice versa. So this tendency does not mean that the market will end up looking like a perfectly competitive market, but in general, what you find is that monopsony power will push the price closer to marginal cost. Remember for the monopolist, their gain came in the fact that um, there was a difference between marginal cost and price, right price, was greater than marginal cost, but for the monopsonist, their markdown came in the fact that their price was lower than the marginal value. So now with monopoly power, it will tend to push that price closer to that marginal value. Lastly, there is an example of monopsony power in the US manufacturing sector. Example 10.5, you can just read through it for your knowledge enrichment purposes. So that concludes chapter 10. We only have one more chapter to go, and that is chapter 11. 
if you want the heads up and we only do sections 11.1 .1 and 11.2 in that particular chapter and then that concludes your microeconomics for second year